All right, guys. Hello. Good morning. So I don't have a lot of time, but I do have to release this word for someone. Um, I know I'm getting a lot of questions. When am I coming back? You know, how's everything? I am doing great. God is still moving from that faith walk. He's moving in my life. I can't even begin to tell y'all the things that has been happening. I'm keeping quiet about it, but just no glory to God. I'll share it when he leads me to. So um, basically, I was just in the middle of doing some laundry and my son is getting ready did on lunch break, but he's getting ready to go back in a couple minutes. So I got to got, kind of just give you guys this. It's a lot to cover, but I'm going to do my best to get it out. And when I don't get a chance to finish, check the description box below. I will be if, if, um, if I would not have done this video, it would have been like two weeks off, but I'm going to be able to come back on like the week of Christmas, which is next week, like Christmas like closer to Christmas, okay? So let me give you guys these words. I feel like this is like for maybe one or two people. I just gotta build, beat it and release it. But this part, let me say, and then I'll just give you guys what he was giving me. Some of it he was giving me today. Some of it he was giving me some days ago. God is just doing some great things. So, um, okay, so anyways, guys, and I was not expecting to come on do no video. I'm just, you know, so anyway, I'll just give you guys the word of the Lord, glory to God. So um, what God was, was reminding me of to tell you guys is, and I believe I said this before in prior videos like last year and even this year and different things. I can't really remember the titles, but we've already talked about it before. Uh, what he was um, giving me to, to give you guys again, this was a couple days ago. I want to say this was like on Sunday evening. He was showing me to give you guys use what you have. Like the voice that you have, use it. The gift that you have in your hands, whether it be to record or write or sing or uh, write words or whatever, use those gifts. Use your voice. Like he was just showing me like he have a purpose for you. He have a destiny for you. Don't allow the enemy to try to make you feel like what you're going through, you know, is this or that. Like you got to continue to hold fast to God. You got to continue to trust him and you got to use whatever it is that God has given you. Don't like don't overlook it you know use what he has given you and allow god to have his way in your life amen so somebody be encouraged by that use what you have and this could be any area this could be physically this could be spiritually this could be financially this could be relationally this could be any area of your life use what god has blessed you with don't think it's too big don't think it's too small use that and you watch how god moves in your life you watch how god moves in that you watch how god bless you amen so that's that word. Um, before I get into the reading, I'm going to give you guys these words. Now, I will read Psalms 143 through 146 and Psalms 32 also. But let me give you guys these other words first before I read that. And like I said, whatever I don't get a chance to read, then I'll just leave below in the description box. So I'm going to read that for someone. The Lord showed me that Psalms 143 and 146 was for someone like uh, 143, 44, 45, 46, right? Then he told me to read Psalms 32. I know we have a Psalm series, but this was the words that God was giving me to share with you guys, like for right now. Like he literally had me stop folding that laundry in the middle of doing laundry and uh, cleaning and everything and said, jump on and do this word. So God be the, to God be the glory. So before I read that, um, another word that God said for someone, he said Ezekiel 27, he said he is dealing with your enemies. He said he is dealing with uh, your enemies and it's like, um, it's, it's, it's final. He's just going to deal with them. Because it's at a stage where he have to deal with them. So that's the word for someone. The lightning keep going in and out, guys, but I can't think about that right now. Uh, the, another word that God said for someone. Now, this could be the same word for one person. This could be multiple for words for whoever. I don't see that this is for a lot of people, but for whoever it is for, to God be the glory. The next word that God showed me for someone is he said divine timing. He said divine timing, and he said Ecclesiastes 3.1 and Ecclesiastes 3.11. Like Ecclesiastes 3.1. Is talking about and we have a series on a lot of these scriptures but I'm gonna to try to read it. it's talking about how there is a time and season for every activity under heaven and then Ecclesiastes 3 11 is talking about how God makes everything beautiful in his in his time and that he has set eternity in the hearts of um, like mankind or humans but we cannot like fathom or understand it so those were the scriptures for you another word that God said for someone he said he's got it like he got it I basically He's got it. Whatever the situation is, he got it. Like, leave it in his hands. He got it. He wants you to trust him. And then he gave me um, Psalms 23, 1 for you, and also Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. 
Another word that the Lord said for someone, and he said this very loudly for whoever this part is for, he said divine restoration. Divine restoration, Joel 2, 25, 26, and Psalms 126. And also, um, I'm going to pray. I was just writing. I put the towels down. like that. So, And then another word that God said for someone, God is giving you the land. So let's go over this quick recap. I'm going to read, then we'll pray. So this, this point for someone, God is dealing with their enemies. Your scripture is Ezekiel 27. God is dealing with their enemies. Another word for someone, divine timing. God said divine timing, Ecclesiastes 3.1 and Ecclesiastes 3.11 is your scripture. Another word for someone, God said he's got it. Psalms 23.1 and Proverbs 3.5 through 6. Don't limit God. Don't limit him. Amen. That doesn't say that, but I'm just saying that for someone. Okay. Another word for someone, divine restoration. Joel 2, 25, 26, and Psalms 126. And then the last word for someone, God is giving you the land. That's our theme for the entire month of uh, December. Our main theme is faith, favor, finances, but we're talking about business economy. We've been talking about that. If you go over the teachings and everything, and even a part of our walk, you know, we're talking about how God wants us to inherit and possess and obtain. And he's giving you the land. Amen. So God has, has said that for someone. He's giving you the land. The land could be physically, the land could be favor. Uh, with um, a banking institution or financially, the land could be spiritual. But let me tell you, God is giving you the land. So whatever that land means for you, you receive that. Okay, so I'm going to pray last, but let me give you guys these scriptures. Let me just read really quick, okay? Justice is fine. He's in there finishing up his lunch and plan that I'm going to log him back into the Google Classroom. Okay, Psalms 143. And I don't mean to rush. Like I said, guys, I wasn't intending to do this. Like the Lord told me, if I don't release this word, he's going to deal with me. And I don't need that. Okay. <laughs> so glory to God. So Psalms, I'm just going to read. If you want, you can go in your Bible with me. But I'm just going to be reading Psalms 143 through 146. Glory to God. God is good. So Psalms 143, a Psalm of David, it says, Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy and your faithfulness and righteousness. Come to my relief. Do not bring your servant into judgment for no one living is righteous before you. The enemy pursues me. He crushes me to the ground. He makes me dwell in darkness like those long dead. I don't know who I'm reading this for, but this was the Lord. This was the word that God gave me to just read. So my spirit grows faint within me. My heart within me is dismayed. I remember the days of long ago. I meditate on all your works and consider what your hands have made. I spread out my hands to you. And guys, it sounds like an echo because I'm in the bathroom. So if y'all hearing the, the uh, TV or the echo, just bear with me. We just getting the word out. OK, so I remember the days of long ago. I meditate on all your works and consider what your hands have done. I spread out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Selah. Answer me quickly, O Lord. My spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me or I will be like those who go down to the pit. Let the morning bring me word. Glory to God. This is a word for somebody of your unfailing love. For I put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go. For to you, I lift up my soul. Rescue me from my enemies, O Lord, for I hide myself in you. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on level ground. For your name's sake, O Lord, preserve my life. In your righteousness, bring me out of trouble. In your unfailing love, silence my enemies. Destroy all my foes, for I am your servant. Guys, I feel that fire again in my foot. Glory to God. Amen. Your fight for the love, silence my enemies, describe my foes from your servant. In Jesus' name, amen. So that's Psalms 143. And I have been praying for you guys daily. I know it's been like four or five days, but I'm daily um, praying for you guys. I'm daily just covering you guys in prayer and praying for you guys and lifting you guys up before the Lord. So Psalms 144, it's, it's also a Psalm of David, and so is Psalms 145. And um, Psalms 146, I don't know who that is was from but let's read so praise be to the lord my rock who trains my hands okay let me hurry up guys who trains my hands for war my fingers for battle he is my loving god and my fortress my stronghold and my deliverer my shield in whom i take refuge who subdues peoples under me oh lord what is man that you care for him the son of man that you think of him man is like a breath his days are like a fleeting shadow part your heavens oh lord and come down, touch the mountain so that they smoke. Send forth lightning and scatter the enemy. Shoot your arrows and rout them. Reach down your hand from on high. Deliver me and rescue me from the mighty waters, from the hands of foreigners whose mouths are full of lies, whose right hands are 
whose right hands are deceitful. I will sing a new song to you, O God. On the 10th screen, lyre, I will make music to you. To the one who gives victory to kings, who delivers his servant, David, from the deadly sword. Deliver me. And the Lord said for someone, meditate on these. Of these scriptures are for you. Um, meditate on them. Like, confess them. Like, break them down one by one. Okay, so... Um, Deliver me and rescue me from the hands of foreigners whose mouths are full of lies, whose right hands are deceitful. Then our sons in their youth will be like well-nurtured plants, and our daughters will be like pillars carved to adorn a palace. Our barns will be filled with every kind of provision. Our sheep will increase by thousands. I'm sorry, I was looking at this. Okay, by tens of thousands in our fields. Our oxen will draw heavy loads. There will be no breaching of walls, no going into captivity. No cry of distress in our streets. Blessed are the people of whom this is true. Blessed are the people whose God is the Lord. So now let's get into Psalms 145, a psalm of praise of David. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All you have made will praise you, O Lord. Your saints will extol you. Let me say this first and one before I get into verse 11. You guys remember that funeral dream that I had, that piano uh, and funeral dream? The, there's someone on here, you're a woman, and like you disqualifying your gifts just like that girl in that dream. And God is saying, you have to stop doing that. You have to use what he has given you because he is different to him spiritually than how you look at it. You know what I'm saying? So you, you got to see yourself through the eyes of God. You can't just look at it naturally. You got to look at it spiritually and naturally and your spirit, you know, go that fire again. That spirit has to, the spiritual has to triumph with what you naturally see. Okay. Okay. So amen, sister. So they will tell, okay, all you have made will praise you. Oh Lord, your saints will extol you. They will tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might so that all men may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is faithful to all his promises and loving to our all he has made. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving to our all he has made. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Glory to God. And guys, God is doing some amazing things, some exciting things, some supernatural things, some some great things. He's He is just doing it, guys. So... Here's Psalms 146. Um, okay, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, immortal men who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. See, because we serve a covenant-keeping God, amen, whose hope is in the Lord his God, the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them, the Lord who remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the alien and sustains the fatherless and the widow, but he frustrates the ways of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever, your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Amen. So that is Psalms 143 through 146. Let me read Psalms 32 to you guys really quick, guys. Glory to God. So Psalm 32, I heard this very strongly for someone. It says, it's of David, it's a mascal. It says, blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him, and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was sapped. 
as in the heat of summer, Selah. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin, Selah. Therefore, let everyone who is godly pray to you while you may be found. Surely when the mighty waters rise, they will not reach him. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance, Selah. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. Do not be like the horse or the mule which have no understanding, but must be controlled by bit and bridle, or they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the men who trust in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing all you who are upright in heart. In Jesus' name, amen. So I don't have time to read Ezekiel 27, guys, but um, you can read it, or you can just check out when we did Ezekiel Bible study, but I will tell you what it is talking about. It is talking about a lament for Tyree, and it is about um, 36 verses. So read it. If that part was God is dealing with your enemies is for you, read Ezekiel 27, because that's what he's saying concerning them. That's the word of the Lord. Next, we're going to go to the part talking about divine timing, and I will read you guys these scriptures. So let me find um, Ecclesiastes, guys, and I'm going to try to be off in another couple of minutes. I'm not trying to rush, but I did have to get this, this word out. So and I had to get it out right now, not later today or not even next week. So Ecclesiastes 3.1, it says there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. And it continues on. Uh, if you're used to the channel, I always encourage you guys to um, read things in full context. You know, I always mostly reading to you guys in full context, but that's the word that God gave. And then also verse 11 was for you. It says, um... He has made everything beautiful in his time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men, yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. But what was really sticking out to me for you was he has made everything beautiful in his time. Amen. Okay, so the part where God said, God, that God said he got it, he kept saying, I got it. And he said it like really calm. Like, you know, like, um, let's say I give you guys this example again. Let's say um, someone that you trust and they trust you. Let's say they need something and you have it. And you say, okay, I'm going to deposit this to you or I'm going to meet up with you and give you this. They don't have to keep calling you, asking you when it's en route. They trust you. They know if you say you got it, you got it. You know, you wouldn't tell them that you did if you didn't. So they can trust you. So it's a sure thing. Just like when you order that pizza. Some of you people don't even know those people with those pizza places or wherever you order from. But when they say, okay, we'll be there to you in 45 minutes, an hour, 30 minutes, you trust them, right? You trust them. You know, you trust the chair that you're sitting in. You trust that the light going to turn off on and on, right? You work uh, in your business or on your job and your career, whatever. You know your paydays. You know what you put in, so you know what you're going to get out. So trust God. God said he got it, and he said it so calm and cool like he got it. So it's no reason for you to stress. It's no reason for you to be all anxious and jumping all over the place. God is greater than man. There's nothing off limits to him. So when he say he got it, that's what he means, that he got it. Amen, guys. So now, um, Psalms 23, verse 1, let me read this to you guys. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. And this could be any situation. God say he got it. That means he got it. Amen, guys. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 was the next one he gave me for you. And it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean out on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight or he's going to direct your paths. Amen. Okay, so that's the, he said he got it, divine restoration. Let me read uh, these last two for you guys. Then I'm going to pray. He didn't give me a scripture for giving the land because we've been talking about the land and we have so many videos talking about the land, even aside from the, this month. So I believe that's probably why he didn't give me one. But um, let me give you guys these John, the Job 225, 26 and Psalms 126. And then we're going to pray. And guys, we are going to be praying on Saturday. I'm going to leave the time below. I did also post, like I said, on the community tab. I believe I told you guys that earlier. I posted on the community tab the other day. That's mostly where I'm going to be posting where God is giving me things on the tab. But like for this, he actually told me because I did release some words on there the other day. But he actually told me to come on and... um give you guys this video so hold on guys because i need to find joel usually i can just go right to it but let me see where it's give me a second guys okay okay so joel 
225, 26 was what the Lord gave me for you. This divine restoration part. Um, and like I said, we have other videos talking about this, guys. But this is like a specific word for somebody like right now. Amen. So, Joel 2, 25, 26 says, I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten, the great locusts and the young locusts, the other locusts and the locusts swarm, my great army that I sent among you. You will have plenty to eat until you are full and you will praise the name of the Lord your God who has worked wonders for you. Never again will my people be shamed. And here are Psalms 126 for someone that's the same person for divine restoration. I feel that fire in my foot, guys. Again, glory to God. Psalms 126, the whole thing is for you. Okay, when the Lord brought back the captives to Zion, this is a song of accents. We were like men who dreamed. And then B in the footnotes is when or like A is when the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion. Or in the in, and then B is or man restored to hell. So when the Lord brought back the captives to Zion, we were like men who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Somebody confess that this morning, whoever this is for. Restore our fortunes, O Lord. Like screams in the Negev, those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. He who goes out weeping, carrying seed to sow will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with him. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's pray, guys. Also, like I said, we're going to be on the prayer line on Saturday. I'm going to put the time below. Um, but let's pray. Let me just generally um, pray for you guys as I did. He did tell me to pray as well. So, Father God, we just bless you. We love you. We lift you up. We magnify you, God. I thank you for the souls that are on this video today, whoever it was that you told me to make this video for. God, I pray that they take heed. I pray that these words encourage and bless them. Father God, I pray that you get all the glory. And I just pray for all the subscribers and viewers and those that even they share this video with or those just generally around the world needing prayer. Touch my brothers and sisters in Christ, Father God. I thank you for those that will be saved. I thank you for even touching those that's in the backslidden state. Excuse me, Father God, I thank you for touching souls on today. Touch uh, minds, touch hearts, touch spirits, touch bodies, touch finances, touch marriages. Touch every area of life, Father God. Touch every area concerning them, Father God, naturally and spiritually, whether I release it or not, God. I just thank you that you are touching on the north, south, east, and west. I thank you, God, that your word is speaking in their life, their faith is speaking for them, and that angels, Father God, have been assigned to them, Father God. And we give you glory, God, and we pray that you continue to protect and bless and keep them. Number 6, 24 through 27, God, Psalms 23, Psalms 91. In Jesus' name, amen. There was another word as I close, guys. But I forgot to um, share with someone that the Lord said, but he was saying that that marriage he's taking you out of. I don't know who that's who that was for. And, you know, different people feel different things. But I heard that for someone because you know what that means for you. He's taking you out of it. I'm not getting into detail of that's for you. That's for you. It'll be a confirmation. But the Lord said he's taking you out of it. Now, this is not a person where if you want to get out and the Lord didn't tell you to get out, then that's not your word. This is a confirmation because it could be where you're dealing with abuse or God never ordained that marriage for you. That marriage was probably sent from the enemy to take you out and kill you and destroy you. It could be a demonically arranged marriage. That you should not have been in. But anyway, God said he's going to take you out of it. We know that God is a God of marriage. He's a God of love. He wants us to be united. He wants us to be married. But everybody marriage is not like that. No one can come to me and say God ordained every marriage because God have not ordained every marriage. Some marriages are of Satan. Every marriage is not of God. So no one can come to me and tell me that because I have Bible and I have the word of God and I know what I hear. So glory to God, God bless, but I did hear that for someone and I am praying uh, blessings over you that are married or will be married before this specific person. The Lord said he's taking you out of it. Amen. Because it's something is not, is not good. It's not good. I'm not going to get too deep on camera, but you know, if it's for you, amen. So to God be the glory, I've released his word. Glory to God. I love you guys. And I'll see you on the next video. God bless.